Mormonism teaches that trillions of planets scattered throughout the cosmos are ruled by countless gods who once were human like us. They say that long ago on one of these planets, to an unidentified god and one of his goddess wives, a spirit child named Elohim was conceived. This spirit child was later born to human parents who gave him a physical body. Through obedience to Mormon teaching and death and resurrection, he proved himself worthy and was elevated to godhood as his father before him. Mormons believe that Elohim is their heavenly father and that he lives with his many goddess wives on a planet near a mysterious star called Korah. Here, the god of Mormonism and his wives, through endless celestial sex, produced billions of spirit children. To decide their destiny, the head of the Mormon gods called a great heavenly council meeting. Both of Elohim's eldest sons were there, Lucifer and his brother Jesus. A plan was presented to build planet Earth where the spirit children would be sent to take on mortal bodies and learn good from evil. Lucifer stood and made his bid for becoming savior of this new world. Wanting the glory for himself, he planned to force everyone to become gods. Opposing the idea, the Mormon Jesus suggested giving man his freedom of choice, as on other planets. The vote that followed approved the proposal of the Mormon Jesus who had become savior of the planet Earth. Enraged, Lucifer cunningly convinced one third of the spirits destined for Earth to fight with him in revolt. Thus, Lucifer became the devil and his followers the demons. Sent to this world, they would forever be denied bodies of flesh and bone. Those who remained neutral in the battle were cursed to be born with black skin. This is the Mormon explanation for the Negro race. The spirits that fought most valiantly against Lucifer would be born into Mormon families on planet Earth. These would be the lighter skinned people, or white and delightsome, as the Book of Mormon describes them. Harrison, Arkansas is the most racist town in the United States. I wouldn't say after dark, man. Honestly, dude, you have balls of steel because you could get hospitalized by some guys that want to beat your ass. I've had several old men come by here, look out the window and tell me, he says, you better go tell that nigger to get out of here and shit. About 10 minutes, I'm going to be back. You better be fucking gone. Okay, come back. We're white man with white lives. We matter too. You're a white man. Crazy. You're a dumbass motherfucker. Are you dumb shit? You're a motherfucker. Are you a Marxist? Communist. Domestic terrorist. Why don't you take it to Chicago or New York and hold it up for the shit together? Explain to me why I couldn't find things. There we go. Fucking job. I'm Jesus. Yeah, got a tail. That shit don't make shit here. Hey, all lives matter, not just black. You're you're a Caucasian. Yeah, you're white. You look like a white guy holding a black flag. What's the deal with that? That'd be a shame. You're a white boy. Sure, that's a different side. You're white, aren't you? Oh boy. <laughs> hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Hey, you said something too. Yes, sir. I am good. Because I'm I'm tired of seeing. This right here is the biggest hoax there ever was. It's just the next thing to ask. It, it is. But yeah, black is... lives do matter, but what about ours, man? Uh, apparently, black people's lives matter more than us. Apparently. You know, the Irish had. the niggers gonna kill you too. black lives. And I have black lives. Hey, Mike. How's your day going? Walmart, they put out this statement. I'm going to ask you to leave. Exactly what I'm saying is, is exactly what they would ask me to do.
Soon after, this identical genetic mutation was found in fair-skinned Europeans. There was a magic moment in this research. When I got back the results that showed that the number and the size and the amount of pigment in the light-skinned zebrafish were all diminished, and the same thing happened in humans, when I opened the textbook and saw that same thing, I began to sweat. Not only did light-skinned people evolve from black-skinned people, but lighter-skinned people, whether they're European or whether they're Asian, like me, were actually mutants, mutants, mutants of the dark-skinned people. Human skin comes in a whole spectrum of colors. Strangely enough, scientists have only just been able to find the genes that define the skin color differences between races. What is the biological basis of human skin color? An international team of scientists has recently found a key to that puzzle. Dr. Cheng was struck by the fact that these same three differences apply to light versus dark skin humans. Our skin also varies in the size, number, and intensity of pigments. The team then isolated the gene responsible for skin pigmentation in the zebrafish and showed that a mutation caused the golden variety's pale skin. So this must be the one between, unless you, this is average. Out of curiosity, the researchers examined the databases listing all the human genes. Surprise, they found a very similar gene, SLC24A5. But how could they find out whether the gene had the same function in humans as in zebrafish? They tried an experiment, injecting the human gene into the golden zebrafish. Jason Mest did the procedure, and it worked. When injected with the human gene, the embryo of the golden variety developed darker markings. Add a human gene and a zebrafish can change its stripes. Researchers then showed that the gene played a central role in the evolution of European skin color. So there are three billion uh, bases in our genome. One letter of that, which changes one amino acid in this protein, seems to be responsible for the evolution of lighter skin color in Europeans. It actually provides very great support for other people's work uh, that, that have tried to explain why uh, people have lighter skin in Europe, uh, which is that in order to uh, not get rickets, uh, because we need vitamin D from the sun, we have to be exposed to that in our skin, uh, you need lighter skin in order to make enough vitamin D to not get rickets to live further north. According to the theory, some 200,000 years ago, the first modern humans, black Africans, started migrating outside Africa. Anyone carrying the mutation for light skin was better protected against rickets. But by showing that the original skin color of humans was black and that whiteness is a recent mutation in evolutionary terms. One thing we need to establish anytime the term race is brought up, are you doing this work to compare, to make value judgments, to put people down? Well, we're not interested in those discussions as scientists, hopefully. Um, but on the other hand of it's to understand differences, to understand biology, to uh, um, celebrate difference, for, uh, for example, then it's fine to talk about it. And we need to recognize, secondly, that it's a very complex term. So it includes things that are genetic, such as pigment, shapes of the body, um, but it also includes factors that are not genetic, language, uh, customs, nationality, religion, none of those are genetic. Those are sociological. But I think it's time that we can we join and help clarify the use of this uh, term and to make our discussion more sophisticated. Africa is the cradle of humanity and the first modern humans, Homo sapiens, emerged in Central East Africa approximately 200,000 years ago. 
Thus, the European is a depigmented African that left their ancestral home, Africa, thousands of years ago and underwent phenotypic changes to adapt to the glacial environment, i.e., Ice Age Europe, that the African migrated into 45,000 years ago. White skin emerged approximately 8,000 years ago. In other words, white people are the descendants of black people. Over millennia, this fact has been forgotten. The white European, especially the ardent anti-black racists, must accept this fact. He or she must stop treating the black African like their child, and rather view them as their parent, as elders are worthy of respect. As the fifth commandment states, honor thy father and thy mother, that they days may be long upon the land. Although all people are fundamentally African, the environments in which different racial groups evolved created different cultures as Africans migrated to different places around the world. This chart by clinical industrial psychologist, Dr. Edwin J. Nichols, explains it quite well here.